Hello everybody and thank you for taking the time to join me today. Um, for those of you who have come previously, welcome back. And for those of you who are new to Education City webinars, thank you for joining us today. My name's Hayley and today we're going to be looking at using Education City effectively to support SEND students. Now, Obviously, we all know SEND is that umbrella term covering those who have health conditions to those children who maybe have um, visual impairments, hearing impairments, and also down to those who have profound multiple difficulties um, or ASD, which is an umbrella term in itself, isn't it? Some schools may cover EAL, gifted and talented students within their SEND umbrella. Um, as they obviously require some form of specific educational requirement. But every school, whether mainstream or SCND specific, will be as individual as the educators within it. All of us have our different learning styles, teaching styles, and obviously the children that we teach are very individual as well, all having their own needs. So this webinar is more about showing you the tools that Education City has to offer that will help you in supporting students with special educational needs um, within Education City. And I do hope that they can help you. Um, a couple of things that we're going to be looking at are the My Cities, which are really useful for routine and structure, and the benefits of certain tool types as well. Now, just before we get started again, um, the account I'm going to be using is made up, so do not worry if you see any student or teacher names, they are all made up. No GDPR rules being broken here, and it will be an English account that I'm using, but again, if you are joining us from outside of England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, or anywhere else, I will point out some of those features that may appear differently to you. But finally, if you've got any questions for us, please do wait until the end where I'll be able to give you my email address and you can send them over. And we do love to hear from you. OK, let's head over to Education City and we can get started. Here we are and just log in there. And we're at our homepage. Now, again, I'm going to be using the new homepage. Don't worry if you're on the old screen, though. You can click on the ribbon and it will bring you to this page. So don't, don't worry there. Now, predominantly, I'm going to be heading over to the My City today. Now, I have made one earlier, a bit of a blue Peter moment, um, but obviously, you can create your My City using this function search contents. Um, the curriculum map just there, or the subjects area. And those areas may appear slightly differently if you are from Scotland, Northern Ireland, or Wales, but they all do the same thing. Everything in Education City is mapped to the curriculum that is used in each country. Um, now, do not worry if you've missed any previous webinars, you will be able to find them in our video user guide, as long with um, a couple of instructional pieces just there and we have got our feedback just there again we would love to hear from you so let's start with a my city now obviously you can create your my cities and you can add a number of tools into them but what i've done here is i've actually created a my city for a particular pupil um, for the week beginning the 11th of the 5th and what i've done is i've started to add tools in for literacy and numeracy or maths and english just there for this one student to work on and i'm going to show you how you can use this to structure before i do that though i want to show you a couple of the tools that we have so starting off with our videos um, now, the times table videos are fantastic. Um, they do and have the, um, the song that obviously is really good for um, auditory learning, but you do also have the words at the top of the screen. So for those visual work learners, it helps them. And a couple of them even have a few dance moves in there. So um, you can maybe appealing to those kinesthetic learners as well. And the great thing is that all of them this multiplication table is just here you'll see it comes with an activity that 
is looking at multiplication facts. And again, the activities, they are marked for you, so you can track the learning. But what you can also do is enable the activities to be done multiple times. That meaning that um, obviously they can keep having a go to try and improve their best score. And as you can see just there, so we've got times two, times five matching the times five and the times 10 matching there. But we do have more activities, as you can see just there, as looking at inverse measures and then along with the times table. Now, you may have noticed a couple of different tools in here. We've got our topic tools. Now, come summer, when we remove our flash content, we will be adding more HTML5 topic tools. But until then, you can still use them. They aren't available on an iPad or a tablet, but it doesn't mean to say you can't use them in a classroom or send them to students who are maybe using laptops or computers at home. And one of them I'd like to start with is this one. This is a counting one. Um, you may think counting, um, you're looking at multiplication there. What are you doing? Um, you'll see why. And if I just open this up, um, obviously I've enabled Flash previously. The idea behind the, these topic tools is that you can select a random number. You can see there's quite a few on there, but you can group them so we can look at them in um, our twos or maybe fives or even tens as well. There we go. So they encourage sort of arrays um, and understanding multiplication through repeated addition. And you've got obviously the total number there, we can hide that. The other thing we can do in the settings area is we can actually change the maximum number. So I'm going to take it down to 20 just here. So we can look at maybe number bonds to 20 if we want to. And we've got different themes as well. So there's flowers, there's balloons, there's flying saucers. And if we go for a random amount here, really good for addition, so the interactive addition, because you can add your green ones to your yellow ones to your red ones, and you've got that there. Alternatively, if we're looking at our two times table, we can look at two, four, six, plus one more makes seven, and we're right there. And again, we've also got a balloons one as well, sort of with hot air balloons, that's quite colorful. Um, and really interactive there as well. So let's do these in fives. But you can see the pattern that's formed. You can use this in as many ways as you need to. And it's a really, really useful tool um, that can be done at home. Children can practice their times tables as well as their addition. So that's one of the topic tools. If I head down here, we also have um, some English ones. Now, this one is the sentence builder. Um, there we go, let's open that one up. And obviously, it comes with some different types of sentences. Some of them are very cross curricular as well. So, we've got electricity there, we've got places of worship, Great Fire of London, and the seaside. Um, I think I'm going to choose some noun phrases, and you can see they appear just here and we can add them into our list. Then when we play, you've got them there to start using. And it's really great because you've got some highlighters here. So we can highlight the ones that we know start at the beginning and the end of the sentence due to the capital letter and the full stop just there. There we go. Um, but we can also use the other highlighters to maybe highlight the noun, and um, we've got, oh, no, sorry, that's the adjective, my apologies. Um, and we've got the noun just there as well. And you can sort of structure this in the order that the sentences go, reading out each word. So we've got the blue ball is best. Maybe, let's check that. And we've got that one right. So it's a really, really lovely tool. And the great thing is as well, you can create an empty list. But the other thing is, if we um, open that one up, we can maybe add a little bit more to it. So we could put and, and let the children finish off the sentence. So they're very adaptable, um, the topic tools that we have. And following on from that, we've got the sentences and paragraphs where, so you've 
created your sentences just here, you can start structuring those into the paragraphs. So like I said, the topic tools, very useful tools that you can use um, during your teaching. So we've got topic tools there. We've got some videos, really fun videos just there. Activities that I say, like I say, will get marked for you and you can enable the students to do them again. And obviously we've got the fun play live at the end there um, and the English one just there that you can sort of edit and adapt. And the children love playing the play live games. So they really do. Um, it's very fun. So what I'm going to do is now we talked about using the um, My City for routine and structure. I'm going to highlight that folder, actions and create a copy. And what I'm going to do now for week beginning, that particular week, I might call this one Monday. And this is what I want Henry to do on Monday. Here we go. Open that one up. Now, obviously, you can edit the picture just there. Henry loves his cars, so we can maybe change that to his favourite colour as well. And we can start to take out the tools that we don't want. So if I want him to focus on his two times tables, I'm going to hold down the mouse onto that particular tool and just drag towards the top to delete. And there we go, just there. So I want that two one. I'm just going to drag these to the top and I'm going to leave this one, this game at the end for um, Henry to do when he's finished. Don't want him to access um, the sentences and paragraphs for now. I just want him to work on the sentences. So again, I'm going to get rid of those. And I don't want him to do any writing at the moment. What I want him to do is to listen to that particular tool. Now, another great thing about all of our Learn Screens activities and a number of our tools is that um, they are both read out for you as well as um, being able to be read themselves. So if you do have a child with a hearing impairment, they can read the um, activity or the learn screen for themselves. And same goes if you have a child with a visual impairment, they can listen to it being read to them. And that's a really um, good advantage for our learn screens and um, activities there. So I'm just going to get rid of the ones that I don't want. Remember, I'm not altering that original folder. This is sort of a new, um, a new folder that I've created and I'm just editing what's in here. And again, we can drag towards the bottom there as well. Obviously, I want to leave that one in there, just there. And then when I'm happy, we can save. So he now knows on Monday, this is what I want him to do. Now, I could sequence it and pop it in that structure, but I'm going to leave it open because I want him to have a go, keep going back to things and keep um, having a go until he's achieved his best. Now, in the student section, I obviously want to give to an individual student. So I'm going to start typing Henry's name. You can see he's appeared here pop that in there and there it is so it's just going to Henry he's got his very own personalized folder in the preferences again you can publish this indefinitely or you can schedule a time frame I want him to start having a go at this on Monday but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the end date open for the weekend just so that he can keep coming back to it if he wants to Further down, we've got our minimum score pass for all of our activities. Um, I'm going to start by setting that to zero because I want to see what he's capable of. Then if I reallocate this um, particular My City folder, I can change this. Let's say if he gets 35%, I could maybe change it to 40%. If he gets 85%, maybe I'll change it to 90%. So he keeps having a go, trying to improve on his best score. Now, I know Henry, countdown timer doesn't help him, it hinders him. So I'm going to turn the countdown timer off and I'm going to put the best for a certificate at 50% because I know he's good and I just want him to see um, what he can do. Now, at the bottom here, we've got our quit finish. 
I want Henry to have a go at the activity, so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to leave a gain on, meaning he can keep having that go. At the very bottom, obviously, it relates to our play live. We want Henry to really have a go at the play live, see what he can do. But I'm going to turn off his school name and play name so he doesn't get embarrassed if maybe he struggles with one thing. Um, but also for safety, depending upon who he's playing against. Now that I'm happy with those guides, I'm going to save that and then I can start tracking what Henry's done in terms of the activities. There we go. You can see there any activities um, will show the scores just there as well. And you can see there's that 0% that I set. I can always go back through and change it. So there's a number of really, really useful tools that will support students with um, SEND. Um, obviously, tools that I've shown you previously. And if I head into the subjects, we do also have a number of really fun videos um, in English EYFS, singing the days of the week song, um, the alphabet song, along with many, many more. But some children might find it a little bit of a stigma if they're maybe working on something quite below their age range. Same goes if you've got gifted and talented students that may be working on something higher. They don't want to be embarrassed by it. They want that stigma, stigma removing. And what you can actually do is you can change these labels. Now, this is something that the admin for your account has to do. It's only available on the admin accounts. But if you head over to the cog in the top right hand corner and into the preferences section and into platform, what you can do is you can change how the students log in. So maybe picking name from a list might be more beneficial instead of having to remember usernames and uh, passwords. And then obviously you can change the names if you'd rather be say literacy, numeracy and, and IT. As an example, those can be changed. And at the very bottom here, you have those labels and these can be changed as well. So if, for example, we we're going to start with red and then let, let's maybe have blue and then we want uh, green. And then maybe this one is yellow. And what we can do is we can change the color of those as well. So this one will be blue. There we go. And red and we can also change what these say so this one might be two and one and we can change those colors so you might have a student in year three who might be working at blue one you can sort of change that understanding so that that does release that stigma but as i said it is something that um the administrator for the account has to do and it will be applicable to the whole school when it's done. So that is about everything that I have to show you today. Um, please do remember that all of our webinars, including this one, can be found on our YouTube page as well as on the video user guide. And please let us know if there is a webinar that you want to see. This webinar was actually created because of your feedback. Somebody asked for it and that is what we've done. And you can send any feedback or any questions to our email address just there. We love hearing from you. We really do. I hope to see you at our next webinar. Um, but if you've got any questions in the meantime, let us know. OK, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.